Yes, so the title of uh, my presentation is the title of our research project, which is uh, divided into uh, two uh, parts. Uh, Christopher Robertson, who spoke yesterday at this conference, works with the uh, continuum uh, modeling of paperboard, and uh, I work with the experimental part in this project. Uh, but in both of our, our sub-projects, we are interested in uh, the mechanical behavior of paperboard materials. Uh, the motivation for this is to reduce waste and the risk of uh, defects in uh, final packaging, packages. And therefore the packaging industry use continuum modeling to simulate uh, industrial converting processes. Uh, for example, uh, this figure to the right shows uh, the stress, uh, a snapshot of stress field in uh, a package during forming. And we can see zones of uh, high localized stress around the fold and uh, close to the corner. Um, so experimental uh, results can be used to build, improve, calibrate and analyze uh, continuum models. So that is uh, the connection between uh, the two of our sub-projects. Uh, in traditional experimental mechanics, um, the global or average response of a sample is uh, measured, for example, during tensile tests or compression tests. Uh, this figure shows uh, some typical uh, stress strain curves. Um, and uh, from these curves, uh, we can uh, uh, tell uh, something about the general mechanical behavior of the material and uh, material specific uh, parameters can also be extracted. But uh, however, with more complex and detailed continuum models, there is also a need for more detailed experimental uh, support and understanding of materials. So uh, while stress strain curves measure an average property, for example, an average uh, strain of the sample, um, so-called full field analysis method can be used to uh, assess the heterogeneity of strains within a sample. This can be done, for example, in uh, 2D or in 3D. Uh, digital volume correlation is a 3D uh, evaluation method where we can obtain the, the strain field distribution in a sample in 3D. So we can uh, get, uh, uh, obtain a full picture of, uh, of what happens in the sample during loading. So the main objective of my part of the project is to uh, obtain a better physical understanding of deformation and failure mechanisms in paperboards. And the challenge with this uh, material is that uh, uh, arise due to its microscale heterogeneity. The paperboards is, uh, as you know, built up by paper fibers and fiber bonds. Uh, the material is also anisotropic in uh, the in-plane direction, and we have a through thickness variation that depends on how the paperboard has been manufactured. So some of the research questions I work with is to, uh, to study how the uh, full 3D strain fields develop in a sample during loading and also to move down in uh, at higher uh, uh, at lower scales or so and see what happens in the fiber network during loading and how individual fibers or fiber bonds behave. Uh, in this presentation I will show some results from uh, tensile testing. Uh, we have tested two types of paperboards, one single ply paperboard called Westrock and a three ply paperboard from Billerud Kosnas. We have sampled the, these two paperboards in uh, two different uh, material directions. Uh, the machine direction, which is along the main fiber direction and uh, the cross direction. Uh, the main experimental uh, approach we use is to uh, do tensile testing in situ and combine them with X-ray tomography experiments. Uh, from the X-ray tomography, we obtain the microstructure in 3D, so we can see the fiber network structure and how it changed during loading. We have also performed similar experiments at the synchrotron facility, where we can obtain higher spatial and temporal resolution. Um, the, the 3D stacks, uh, image stacks we obtain from the, um, from the tomography uh, uh, can be used to quantify sample properties. For example, we can uh, um, 
quantify how the sample thickness uh, varies spatially in the samples or the solid fraction or fiber density. Um, and um, we can see different structures in different types of paperboards. We also use uh, um, open source tool to evaluate the uh, orientation of fibers in 3D. But here I will uh, focus on uh, results from digital volume correlation for which we use uh, a Python code called SPAM. And I will show results in terms of volumetric strain field, which represent an average volumetric uh, change in the material. So here is an animation showing how the strain fields develop during loading in a, a West Rock sample tested in machine direction. And we can see how the strain fields uh, builds up uh, close to the notches. Uh, more and more until the sample breaks. In the bottom figure, we see the image from uh, uh, the outer plane direction, and we can see that the strain fields localized in the central part of the paperboard. We can also uh, visualize this type of data in 3D. So here's just an example of how the strain fields in the same sample looks in uh, a 3D vis visualization. Um, the volumetric strain field can be compared to individual components. Uh, here, for example, we have compared the volumetric strain field with uh, single components from the strain tensor. And we see that uh, the volumetric strain fields are uh, dominated by the outer plane component, which represent a sample thicken thickening. And uh, this component is not achievable achievable with the 2D strain field mapping. So this shows that extending the analysis to 3D gets, uh, helps us to get a more, much more complete uh, picture of what happens in the sample. Um, here we can study how the thickness, spatial variations in thickness change for the same sample during loading. And we see that we have a localized increase in thickness in the same areas as where the strain localized before the sample breaks um, and uh, the entire sample uh, uh, becomes thicker along the fracture. For comparison, I will also show um, this volumetric strain field evolution of a sample tested in cross direction. And we see that the strain field patterns looks different in this uh, sample, they are more continuous between the notches across the sample. Um, so if we compare, we have seen this in many samples that in when tested in machine direction, the strain fields uh, localize around the notches and seem to propagate towards the center of the sample in diagonal patterns, while in cross direction, the strain fields are more uh, uh, yeah, they are more continuous between the notches and they are less aligned. Uh, also, after failure, we see that the fracture patterns differ between, uh, depending on the material direction. Um, these uh, pictures show two examples of machine direction samples, and we see that the fracture that appears after failure is uh, relatively angular. We can compare with the cross-direction samples where the fractures are more um, is, are straighter. And the different behaviors between samples in different material directions is an indication of uh, brittle or ductile behavior in the sample. At the micro scale, uh, the macroscopic failure of paperboards are considered to uh, depend on um, uh, breakage of interfiber bonds in the fiber network. And as I tried to illustrate with the conceptual uh, picture shown to the right, there is a higher density of uh, interfiber bonds in cross-direction samples compared to the machine direction samples. Uh, when you load a sample, the fibers aligned with the loading direction are uh, considered to uh, are elongated plastically. And uh, this could lead to uh, strain localization at fiber bonds um, 
uh, distributed at different places in the fiber network. But we believe that in cross direction, uh, we see a more collective net network behavior where uh, the separation of horizontally oriented fibers leads to strain localizations along uh, horizontal oriented fibers, which could explain different uh, strain field patterns arising and also the different um, fractures developing. So um, we have seen uh, that um, the, there is a localized increase in sample, in sample thickness be before the sample fails. Um, it is believed that uh, breakage of interfiber bonds and interfiber separations leads to um, the increase in sample thickness. And uh, at peak stress and uh, after failure, we see a dramatic increase in uh, the sample thickness, which could be quantified with the methods we have used here. This process is uh, referred to delamination of the sample. Um, and uh, which means that uh, different layers within the paperboard in the outer plane direction are separated from each other. But in order to understand uh, this at more uh, higher detail, we would like to, uh, in future and ongoing work, to label and track the movements of uh, individual fibers in a sample during loading. And uh, f uh, we are also working with the cyclic loading to see how the sample behaves when it's loaded, unloaded in different cycles. And we also uh, have collected data on compression tests that we would uh, like to, um, to analyze in a similar manner. So with that, I would like to uh, uh, thank you for your attention and acknowledge uh, all the project partners, as also my co-workers that work together with me in this project at uh, Solid Mechanics in Lund. Thank you.